This mini-series I've started is a rough guide to maintaining your older video game related things, inspired by people who throw games away because they don't know how to use a cotton bud. So you got your old copy of Mortal Kombat for the trusty Mega Drive for some good old Mortal Kombat. However, nothing's happening. It ain't working. What is the meaning of this? Well, it could be a few things, but in most cases, it's just the game's contacts. That's these things underneath. They gotta be nice and shiny if you want your games to work. You remember this blowing technique? Don't do that. Blowing actually adds a little moisture, and I hope I don't have to explain why that's a bad thing. And if there's any dust or fluff in the cartridge, it just pushes it to the back and it'll always come back unless you clean them properly. And here's how. First, follow all these rules. Don't give them a drink. Don't scream at them. Don't let them study carpentry. Don't take them on a holiday. Don't let them run with knives. Don't show them how you murdered your landlord. Don't feed them poison. They prefer either sherry, a large brandy, or the blood of slaughtered children. Now the reason I picked this game is because it only requires the removal of two Phillips screws. Most of you have screwdrivers, if you don't think you do just check under a couch behind a chest of drawers or in your neighbour's pocket. They're everywhere. Upon removing the screws and after removing the shell you are presented with the board. This is when I get some IPA or isopropyl alcohol, spray it on one end of a cotton bud and wipe down the pins. If you really want to be thorough, you can do the entire board like this, but uh, you don't have to do that unless it's really, really dirty up there, and I don't know why it would be, but once that's all done, you can take the dry side of the cotton bud and dry it off. When you're certain it's completely dry, put the board back in its shell, screw it back up, and give it a test. It should work each time now, no more blowing. If not, then there could be another issue at hand. I'll talk about cleaning the console's cartridge input in another video. Now, Nintendo did things a little differently, annoyingly. What they did was use these special screws, a much more secure way of keeping out curious children. For those, you'll need this. You can find it online under the appropriate name, GameBit. This is the smaller size variant, as Nintendo's consoles used a slightly bigger version of the same screw. Sega later on also started using these screws, but other than that difference, the process is unchanged. Here's the same process done with a Sega Game Gear cartridge that I've had trouble getting to work. You take the screw out, very gently pry it apart, wipe the board down with some IPA, dry it off, put it back together, and hey presto, get over here, I got your game working. Another thing about the cleaning process, it's also quite therapeutic. I recommend taking a nice rainy day and putting a few hours into cleaning collections of cartridges. It's just a really calming process. It's not always easy though. Some cartridges I actually have no idea how to get into, without damaging them at least. Mostly the older ones such as the Vectrex, Famicom or the very early pre-Master System Sega cartridges. Oh, that last one you saw? Yes, that colossal thing? That's a Neo Geo AES cartridge. Not only are they the only cartridges I know of that actually matches the size of its box, but it's got two rows of pins! I don't know about you, but I'd love to just get in there and clean the fuck out of it. With this process, all your old games should be fine as long as you don't kick them down the stairs or drop them in a pool of molecular acid. In the next video in this series, I'll attempt to increase your old controller's lifespan. But until then, I'll be back in 16 bits.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>